and I think there's no doubt that the right painting won. Oh, I really that's do. Very I really lovely do. of you. Thank no, you. No, it's a. I mean, it, the critics have all said it. I'm no critic, but that this is the strongest Archibald for a very long time. Uh, so you were up with some really hot competition there, Ben, weren't you? Uh, I have to say that I um, when I looked on the internet to have a look at the works that had been entered this year, I thought, why have you all put your good paintings in this year? <laughs> I thought the painting was a shoo-in and then I, I seriously thought this year is one of the strongest years that I've seen, um, which was really devastating just at the beginning, but um, it e I end up having won it. It's pretty exciting to That's be involved wonderful. in it. That's wonderful. When did you meet Margaret Olley? Uh, in 2002, Margaret judged the Brett Whiteley Travelling Art Scholarship and I have to be honest and say that that year I'd been three years a finalist. It's a prize for under 30s. Uh, and that year, when I found out that Margaret was a judge, I thought this, this very sort of violent macho painting, she's going to put a big red cross through my name. <laughs> but she saw something in it um, and she gave me the prize and has supported my practice ever since for nine years. And when did you first ask Margaret to sit for a portrait? Uh, I suggested it a year or so ago um, and I asked her if she'd do it naked. Why didn't you, Mark? Why didn't you? I think she. Why think didn't she you? Will next why year. why well, not naked? Uh, I thought about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, after all, when I uh, sat for Bill Daybell, uh, and when he won the prize, I was on my way to Europe. Uh, I'll never forget that because the press was so severe. I mean, far more than they are today because. Uh, Dobell had won a prize, was it the year before, of Joshua Smith, and there was a great court case about it. So there was a lot of controversy about the whole thing. I mean, I think they wanted me or my mother to say, well, it's not me, it's, you know, so I, I actually, when I came back, it took me a couple of years to really be able to look at it. Really? What do you think of it now, the Dobell? Hmm? What do you think of the Dobell portrait now? Oh, I think it's one of his best. Do you? But I mean, <laughs> I do. She thinks mine's one of my best too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is today. <laughs> so far, <laughs> so far. At least we've got you painting to the edges. <laughs> Yeah. Margaret. I kept on saying to Ben, look, you're leaving the edges, just bare canvas. You should be painting right out to the ends of the canvas. Yeah, I have to and say what is very clever is he's left the canvas in my face. Yeah. And that's very skillful. But, but on a serious level, Margaret, what, do you, what, what is your, your thought about Ben's picture of you. Do you like it? Do you think it's a good painting? Well, as a matter of fact, when he came along and said, I've got a photograph of it. And uh, I thought, but when I saw it, I thought it was absolutely marvellous. She actually looked at it and said, oh, there's the old bag. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's very hard to paint an older person. Well, it's something that With ben, ben hasn't all. shied away from. You've painted mm -hmm. several older faces. You've, you, I, the ones that I know about are Beryl Whiteley, Beryl Whiteley. Margaret Olley, Germaine Greer, and you painted Jimmy Barnes, who's got an older face, that, you know, not the, not the young face anymore. What's the, is there something, what is it about older women that you like to paint? <laughs> More uh, character. I asked Jermaine Greer to sit for me naked as well, and she also said yes, but I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so you yes. were the one that knocked that back. Uh, she? <laughs> well, she has a thing about young boys. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, Margaret. <laughs> well, why not? Um, I look, the, and there's four of the Archibald portraits that you've mentioned that I've put in. Um, and and I only choose subjects that have, I, I guess when I look back at it, have had some bearing on my career and more than others, Margaret more than anybody. And 
they, they've all been people who've been involved in my life and either helped me or inspired me or driven me forth to keep doing what I'm doing. So the motivation for painting the portraits that you've painted is not that's a face that I want to paint. That you, it's more that's the person that I, I admire for some reason. Is that...? Uh, oh, look, don't tell anybody, but I thought Margaret Ollie would have to be a, a shoe-in for me to win the Archibald with. <laughs> really? I thought there's... I know this person and I've come to know her and I forget about the, the, the fame and respect that people have for her because we've known each other for a long time. Um, but when I, when I sit with her and when I was doing the work to make this portrait, I sat with her and I asked her questions that I realised I'd never asked her before about her friendship with people like Russell Drysdale and William Dobell. And she was close friends with these people who are mythical legends for me. Um, and she's like this portal to this other world that I know nothing about, only from these famous, famous paintings. Um, and it just seemed like Margaret became such an obvious choice for me to make a painting mm. about. How do you... I, 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 I'm always, always curious about the process and I want to know how, how you find the essence of somebody that you admire or maybe somebody you even put on a pedestal a bit. How do, how do you get the essence? Um, I put Margaret on a pedestal for a few years but she's got such a way of of respecting young, of anyone who makes art. She just cuts through all the, the ego. Um, when I first asked her to do it, her, her first response was, why would anyone want to look at a portrait of me? And I thought, well, there's an interesting subject. Jermaine Greer also said, no, I'm not doing it. And for me, they're the most interesting people. They're totally egoless. They don't see the point of it. They don't... Jermaine Greer's egoless? <laughs> No comment. <laughs> Look, Jermaine Greer is one... I, I have never walked away from a person who I've been so inspired by and, and felt the depths of despair at realising that her expectations of humanity will never be met and so inspired to go back to the studio and continue making work. Mm. Um, and, I mean, so, but she's not a painter, whereas Margaret's a painter. I feel like we've shared a friendship that's about practice, about what we do, and not about this romantic or... Um, idealised vision of what an artist is. It's the real bones of what it is to be an artist, sitting in, in the studio every day and listening to you. She <laughs> makes me listen oh, to you. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're on every day. I made them I both say that. I don't know what I'd do without SBS. Uh, really? Without yeah. SBS. Thank God for that. <laughs> I know. I mean... I'm sorry. You know what... I, I love it when people know what they're listening to, Margaret. That's... <laughs> Well, I'm not very good at... Um, no, I, I know you numbers. listen, and it's a great privilege to know that you do, actually. In fact, I get calls from people who, like doctors, who listen while they're operating. I get a bit <laughs> nervous about that, because I think, you know, <laughs> one miss of the scalpel and they're in... Matisse Ben said that the portrait is one of the most curious art forms, and he said it demands special qualities in the artist and an almost total kinship with the model. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And that's one of the things that I think some artists make the mistake of trying to pick a face that they know. And in the end, that's really just about transcri transcribing an image, about likeness. A portrait, a painting is about more than a likeness, a lot more than a likeness. Mm. Um, and Margaret's been such a different force in my life, so refreshingly different. She's so brutally honest about stuff. Um, which instantly cuts through the ego thing because so much about art is building each other up and feeling that you're bulletproof and Margaret tells you she doesn't like it. Mm. When you first met Ben, all nine or so years ago, Margaret, what was it about his painting that made you well, subsequently... Well, Barry, Barry Pierce and I judged it and we had hundreds and hundreds of slides to go through. Um, we didn't know any of these young students and w it's a very difficult choice. You can only give one prize. This was for the and widely you, travelling arts And you have to look for one person who has something there that will go the distance. Not some clever buggery that people do. That's what 
Unfortunately, a lot of students try to be too clever mm. and they, become, they want to be an artist. Can you remember what you saw in his work, though? Well, it was a long time ago, but, but you Barry and I both felt that he had sufficient skills there mm. to go on with. A lot of them might have been clever, but they just didn't have the bones to go on. Mm. Ben, your early work, which I've been looking at in some detail, the subject matter is interesting. Um, there's a lot of pictures of your car, your Holden Tirana. Um, there's a lot of picture of pictures of you and your friends drunk as skunks. Um, it's sort of young men doing dangerous things. I read somewhere that it was some kind of, do you agree with this, or some kind of an apprenticeship about fast cars, fast food, drinking, smoking the wrong sort of cigarettes and blowing things up? Do you, is that sort of where yeah, it was for you? You nailed it. <laughs> well, I quoted well, somebody, else, young, somebody else, somebody else. The young have to go through that. Do they? I think so, yeah. I, I, I wish they didn't have to go through that. Um, I came well, from a very yeah. loving middle class family. We had everything and all three of us, and my brother's here somewhere. He was probably the maddest of all wherever you are, Jimbo. There he is. <laughs> he um, is have all doctor? become successful and, and good fathers, and James is a great uncle um, for my children and my brother's children, but all three of us, one after the other, absolutely scared the hell out of our parents and there was no rhyme or reason for it and it wasn't just the three of us it was all the young men that we knew and when I look and when I was there and afterwards I realized there's no initiation processes for young men to, to, to bring them into adulthood and not only is there no initiation processes there's actually a real sort of pungent lack of respect from men my age for those 17 year old men we actually ingratiate them into society by putting them under pressure by treating them badly. Um, therefore, those young men then make up their own initiation ceremonies, which include alcohol, drugs, mm. quite often a car from where I came from on the outskirts of Sydney. And it just seemed like that, that, that age group of young men had no voice, I felt. And very naturally, I started making paintings about it. Um, Why very naturally? Because they were just autobiographical. They were just exactly about my experience of what was happening in my life. But painting, why painting as a medium of expressing that? Oh, I'd painted forever. Yeah, getting forever. it out of your system. I always painted, that's I what I did. Do you paint to get things out of your system, Margaret? Do you, is that something that you respond to, that idea? Uh, I don't think so. Because Did you ever? what I do, especially now, as I stopped drinking in 1959, <laughs> I celebrate life. And that's what I do. And you're saying that Ben was celebrating and something And Ben, else. I think, had to get rid of that. And... I think this painting that he did of me mm. is the beginning of celebrating life. Mm. That's nice. Margaret actually said to me about a year ago, I'm sick of you making these ugly paintings, I want you to make something beautiful. But what about the paintings of Joe, your, yeah. your boy? Oh, he was always crying pretty heartily. Oh, was he? <laughs> he was looking pretty disturbed mm. and upset. And, and I guess that was again that continuation of very beautiful surface though but a very kind of confronting image of a little baby crying, screaming, um, which is actually a very natural image if you think about it. That's when a, how they communicate. Um, it was when my wife caught me photographing him doing that that our marriage nearly ended. <laughs> um, yeah, just, I made paintings of, I've made paintings of my wife um, and I feel like I do celebrate life. I'm not, I'm not a negative person. I just mm. feel like there's things to be said and things to be done. Well, I don't think the done. Holden Tirana ones are negative, actually. Oh, but they were sort of like the site of that initiation. They were quite dark landscapes with this ominous white car. Um, yeah. You did a, a history of ab an Aboriginal history course at Monash at one <coughs> stage. What was the motivation for that? Was that...? Because they kicked me out of art school. Oh. <laughs> 
Why did they kick you out of us? Because I was a smoking too many stupid cigarettes and oh, okay. not paying any attention. Um, and they said, if you leave now, we won't fail you. But if you don't leave of your own free will, we will fail you and you won't be welcome back. So I left. And in hindsight, of course they had. I don't know how it survived so long. I wasn't ready to study at university. I didn't have the right mindset. I wasn't um, dedicated. And then I thought I'd, I'd go and study something totally different. So I did correspondence of Aboriginal culture and history through Monash. Did you learn a lot through that? Well, at that point, the Monash University syllabus for that course was just this massive text documenting every Aboriginal massacre that had ever taken place in Australia. And that was basically the course, which is not what I expected. I was hoping more to learn about their culture before Europeans came here. Um, but really, again, looking back, that really started for me a very passionate interest in their cause and you know the way we view their culture and the way we view the way their culture is now. Do their paintings speak to you? Um, they do, They're, but I don't think we understand them at all and I don't think... Um, no, it's not really part of my culture. It's not my story to tell their story or even to understand their story. I don't think any of us can truly understand their story. Mm. Margaret, did you, um, when, during this friendship and the development of the friendship with Ben Quilty, did you, did you give him ideas of what to look at? What, what oh, no, 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 not at all. Do you think that's a good idea or just Well, not? Mind, mind you, I think when you were going to do that portrait of me, I just suddenly remembered, propped up under a light was a little invitation to a show in Paris, a derome, a faux derome of a portrait. Remember I showed oh, I haven't you? forgotten to give it back. Hmm? <laughs> now that was, mm. that was an interesting little road to go down, mm. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, very. I mean, sometimes you can just drop a little pearl and if somebody wants to pick it, pick it up and run with it, Mm. That's good. Do you remember Margaret influencing you? Oh, look, I remember once she came to I my... I mean, she told you to listen to classical my, music, didn't my she? My <laughs> She came to my studio in Woolamaloo. Who knew you were doing? And, um, Bad regard. She, uh, there was, I, I knew she was coming and I thought, oh, no, Margaret's coming to my studio. I'm not ready for this. So I, I turned quite a few paintings against the wall and showed her exactly what I wanted Margaret Ollie to see. And... Um, and, she, of course, she went straight to the pile of paintings turned to the wall. <laughs> and she said, what are these, Ben? And I said, oh, sweat. They're experiments, Margaret. And Margaret said, in front of four or five people, stop experimenting. What did I say? Stop experimenting. Oh, did I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was very bad of me. But the whole time... <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, no, I understood it and I appreciate it. I love that honesty. That that's doesn't happen much. Are you a great fan of Margaret's work? Uh, I have... Haven't have seen very much. <laughs> well, I haven't had a show for about four or five years. <laughs> there, there is literally 40 paintings on the go in her house now. Now? Yeah, and I said to Margaret last time, or a few months ago, I saw her and said, what, what are you starting? What what's happening here and they're these beautiful translucent glowing paintings and I can't do that with paint mm. I take it's taken 60 years of practice and she said I'm like an old tree setting forth flower as quickly as I can before I die well it's true you've got a lot of paintings still to do how many do you have on the go well I haven't had an exhibition what's well, about, about the time you did again I agree he, I'm he. having one in September really yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm busy working away. Can you imagine not painting, Margaret? I can't imagine. No. You. No, it's the only thing I like doing. Talking about the way the paint is applied, John MacDonald talked about your, the way you apply paint. And I don't know whether it was in relation to more recent work or earlier work, but he said that you apply it like it's been applied with a shovel, except it would be, uh, uh, but with the finesse or with the whatever the word was that other painters might use with a brush. 
the, the surface is really important, is it, to you still? Uh, look, I probably happened upon that and, and, and now people write... That's why you were experimenting. Yeah. <laughs> People write that my work that my work mirrors the, the masculine sort of imagery that I employ, and that that very sort of dangerous, almost violent application of paint mirrors the themes that I've looked at for years. Um, but it is. I mean, there's nothing more fun than mixing colour and putting it on. It's just and is it a very physical process of I, I, when I it work? On. I wear. I, w I mean, we're actually polar opposite. The two of us. I wear a big gas mask and gloves and full-length overalls when I work. When you were doing the portrait of Margaret? Yeah, always, because it's really that? toxic. I use a huge amount of paint. Toxic paint. Yeah, and Margaret doesn't get it on her hands either. It's not something you, you should do. I mean, look, if you did it once or twice, it does nothing, but if you're gonna, I realise now that I'll be doing this for as long as I live, I'll be the same as Margaret. Um, and I don't want to get sicknesses that are, that are very directly linked to, to the, the toxins in oil paint. Yeah, I'm thinking of Robert Hannaford now. Is that right? The, the, was there a yeah. well, relationship lots between... Of, uh, lots of elderly artists suffer from really serious from digestive problems. Paint wrapped in the mouth, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. All of, I mean, it's poisonous. It's like any... You just wouldn't put your mm. hands in it over repetitively for years and years and years. Of course it's going to make you sick. Margaret, At least what? they've burned lead white paint which yeah. we all use to use. Yes. Although I've got to say, the first time I met Margaret, she said two things to me, are you one of us or one of them? <laughs> I think I'm one of you, but I'm still not sure what she meant. <laughs> and then she said, and then I said, yeah, you? <laughs> and then she said, do you, do you smoke? And I said, and as she's putting one in her mouth, going, <laughs> I said, no, and she said, good. <laughs> Well, I think it's very smart for young people not to start. <laughs> yes. What are you painting at the moment, Margaret, for the show on in, in September? What sort of things are we seeing, going to see? Well, at the I'm, I'm painting a series of the harbour. Of this From harbor. Circular Quay. Yeah. And the latest thing is doing these different paintings because the harbour looks different every day. Every day is different. Were you out today painting? Well, I was, but it was one of those dead days. The flat I mean, the, it was just, you know, the light wasn't right. Right. But I, I thought, well, I, I'd like to do one of three panels. So from Lavender Bay, the bridge, circular key, looking right out to North Head and Rose Bay. So I've got this big, long panel. You and Lloyd Rees. Lloyd Rees got more joy out of the harbour at the end of his oh, life than... Oh, I love it. Yeah. What about you, Ben? What are you painting at the moment? Do you paint, do you paint every day? When, when I don't have to come to Archibald functions, I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I do, and I've just made a... I suspect he paints in bursts. I do. Yeah, you're dead right. Yeah, yeah she's right. <laughs> um, I can't do it every day. I'm, I'm in the studio every day. But I build, you I build up to making back. a painting. I build up to it and then I'll hit it and hit it and work it. And the, paint, Mar the painting of Margaret only took about two hours. Really? It's From beginning to end? Yeah. I don't tell anybody. <laughs> don't tell the trustees. Um, although that was in three sessions, so that's quite different for me. I usually hit it and if it doesn't work, then I put it, put it aside. And the painting works. The first time I did it, I thought that's really nailed, it's just got Margaret. I felt like I'd Absolutely. brought her into my studio. Yeah. But then it needed some... I scraped one huge part of that painting back and reworked it. Um, but the next painting's a great big hulking looking men. Um, and there's ten of them in my studio. Made in a very similar... Exact, they look... I was going to say they look like Margaret. They don't look like <laughs> Margaret. But they're made in the same way that I made that painting of Margaret. We're out of time, but gee, it's been good to see you. Margaret, thank you so much. And Ben, oh, thank Wilde, you, thank Margaret. you. Pleasure. And would you join me thanking the two of them? Congratulations, Ben.